Hello, everybody. Now, give me just a minute, please, before you dive into the comments section to throw virtual sticks at me. I know what you're thinking. Blimey, it's only been 48 hours since he last had a go at McLaren. Like, what do this guy's other hobbies include? Kicking orphans? Punching blind people? No, no. In today's video, we are going to be talking about when people get things wrong, when people lie unintentionally or otherwise on the internet, how social media can be misleading, and what can be done when things go a little bit wrong. Uh, who is the guilty party in this case? It's not McLaren, it's me. Now, I currently have a cat trying to get in the way. This is Florence. Say hello, Florence. Yeah. Every single time I try and record a piece like this, she appears to come and enter frame and provide some sort of moral support. Unfortunately, I don't think she realises what being helpful kind of looks like. Now, why am I making this video? Well, two days ago, I recorded a piece on the newly announced McLaren Artura. I wanted to discuss the car, the many things that I liked about it, and also a few things that I didn't. The key points being the fact that the quoted power figure that McLaren stated was valid only for 15 seconds because after that the electric motor would throttle its power output. And the fact that they said they had a, a magic suspension which added downforce. Now, in the video, I made a lot of mistakes. And YouTube doesn't really give many easy ways for us slot to rectify those mistakes. On Vimeo, it is possible to replace a video with another and everything to carry on seamlessly. In YouTube land, that doesn't exist. Once upon a time, you could add annotations to videos, if you remember those. They got binned about four years ago. And they were ways of just sort of putting little notes on the video saying, look, this was actually wrong, or yada yada. YouTube, sadly, doesn't give us that option. The only two things we can do are delete the video, re-upload it, or just try and deal with stuff in the comments section or whatever. I know a lot of people out there think that I'm on some mad mission to just batter McLaren for any reason possible. And that simply isn't true. However, in order for you to believe that, I need to be accountable. I need to be transparent and I need to be truthful. The original sort of McLaren saga that in, in many ways sort of made this channel what it is now um, was based entirely on truthful events. I know there are people that think that these things didn't happen or think that they were exaggerated when in actual fact the opposite was true. Wasn't it Florence, you most helpful of cats? However, with yesterday's video, or the other day's video, actually, as the case may be, I did get some things wrong. Now, I really do love McLarens, the cars. They are fabulous. I have yet to drive one that I don't like. But as you all know, there are things that I think the company does wrong. I really care about McLaren's future. I genuinely do, because they remind me in so many ways of my old favourite, Lotus. But Lotus made a lot of mistakes, and the things I saw McLaren doing, they seemed to be treading the very same path as Lotus. And I didn't want that to happen. I want them to succeed. McLaren are a disruptive force in this industry, and that is an important thing. Even if I don't like the end result, the products that they make, their, sim their sheer presence, their existence, is a very, very necessary thing. A lot of people pointed out that some of the things I said, like about the power figure being transient, applied to other cars as well. Things like the Porsche 918. And that's absolutely true. But I don't feel it was really relevant in a video discussing the McLaren. McLaren is not a brand that I've actually particularly singled out for my sort of evil attention because I have done plenty of videos expressing my uh, unhappiness with the way that Porsche do business or Aston Martin or Lotus or others. It's just that I've become very well known for the McLaren stuff. However, like I said, I made mistakes. Certain things that I said which people don't like are merely matters of opinion. Like, for example, I think that McLaren should have made it more obvious about the nature of the power that the car has. The reasoning for that, as I kind of stated in that video, was that the car is going to be ruddy quick one way or another. So I think actually it'd be more of a McLaren thing to just understate their numbers. It is no secret at all that the Italians in particular don't always produce the most accurate figures, particularly when it comes to, say, things like weight. And McLaren have been, for the last decade, 
decade, class leaders in performance, really. Their, their cars are sensational. Ferraris often just pound for pound cannot compare. I, I love Ferrari. Now, I don't think that necessarily makes a Ferrari a worse car. There are things about the Ferrari which is better. There are things about McLaren which is better. There are things about Lamborghini which is better. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. The supercar world is one of many, many compromises. However, I hold McLaren, I like to try and hold McLaren and other companies to a very high standard. In turn, you all hold me to a very high standard because I pride myself on my honesty and my accuracy in things, but I do occasionally get things wrong. Sometimes it's small, minor details, other times it's not. To give you an example, in the video that I put out, I said that McLaren didn't mention anywhere in their brochure about this transient power figure. That's not true. They do. Now, they don't mention it where I think they should, and they have written it in small, but this is my fault. This is not McLaren's fault. That is mine. It was pointed out by a couple of people in the comment section that that was as such, and they are right. Now that I could actually do something about because the only thing I can really do with a YouTube video is I can slice sections out. Sometimes it doesn't work, but for that particular error, I could correct it. However, there were other things that I did wrong. I said that the GT had the fancy cross-linked proactive chassis control setup. It does not. It has a regular one. This, again, is my misunderstanding because in many reviews of the GT, it was said that it has the same suspension as the 720S, which I took to mean it has the proactive chassis control. What it has is the very confusingly named proactive damper control. This, again, is my fault. It is my job as automotive journalist, whatever you want to call me, dickhead at the end of a camera, if you like, I don't mind. This is my job to get these things right because I am supposed to be here to inform you all but I got it wrong. That, unfortunately, was sort of embedded into lots of other things, so there was no way, really, of easily kind of pulling that out. Most of the rest of what I said in the video, I didn't have any inherent problems with, but many people watching it did. And I wanted to make this video for a couple of reasons. Firstly, as an apology to people who thought that that video was a, a continuation of, of McLaren bashing. It really wasn't intended as such. In fact, the opposite is what I meant to make. There were many things about Artura that I really liked that I'm very glad to see McLaren doing. The keeping a continuity of visuals despite the all new architecture underneath. The incredible weight figure despite all of the hybrid gubbins that the car has on it. The fact that it's no doubt going to be obscenely quick and is actually quite reasonably priced compared to what, say, Ferrari are offering. You're going to pay like a, another 60, 70 grand for an equivalent F8. And I'm quite confident in the real world the McLaren is probably just as fast, if not faster. But clearly there were failings in the way that I presented the topic. Now, I think my first mistake really was with the title and the thumbnail. I decided that because more or less most people in the McLaren community really don't like me, then it would make no difference what thumbnail and title I put on the video. So I might as well just go full clickbait. I don't really consider the video super clickbaity because I actually do discuss the very issue that the, the topic and thumbnail uh, are, the title and thumbnail. Uh, a clickbait for me really is when a video says something and then, you know, it says, oh, McLaren isn't what they claim. And then 10 minutes is talking about when you went to the shops with your mates. That to me is clickbait. That's just purely misleading. Now, there are lots of people in the McLaren community that, that just hate me, and I have posted a couple of times in McLaren forums and things, and I've said very neutral or occasionally positive things, and I've been met with just a wall of, of bile and hatred and personal insults, and that's kind of an occupational hazard. It's something I find very unfortunate. It's something I didn't want to happen. I totally understand how it did. I can see why certain people in the McLaren community feel the way that they do about me, and... To, to those people, I can only apologise that you think that I am sort of deliberately setting upon your, your beloved cars. If you watch any of the reviews that I've made of McLaren cars, you will see that I am very much in love with the cars as you are. It's just the company I have certain issues with. There's no difference to when I myself owned a Lotus and loved the car, but did have issues with other things. But what I did when I when I chose to put that thumbnail and, and title there was I, I set the viewers up in a certain way. You are going to watch this information with the sort of 
a preconceived notion. I, I get very accurate statistics about um, how people watch the video, how long they watch the video for. On average, most people watch a lot less than half of the video. That video actually was, was pretty good. Um, it was over 11 minutes was... That video was actually pretty decent for watch time, sort of 11 minutes was the kind of average versus say about six and a half is what you'd normally expect for a regular YouTube car video. And by putting that thumbnail and title on there, I, I think I set people up to expect it to just be me having a at McLaren. I, I, I didn't think that's what I'd done. I thought I'd delivered a reasonably balanced, fair assessment where I said, look, here are the good things, here are the bad things that I don't like, but overall, I think this is a real positive thing that has happened. The feedback that I got from the comment section is of course a mixture, as it always is, but it's very clear to me that even those who don't tend to sort of, you know, hate me for my McLaren opinions, felt that the video was overly negative in its sort of presentation. That is not something I can blame the audience for. That is something I have to take responsibility for. I think YouTube would be a much better place if there was a little bit more accountability for the things that we do. In traditional media, which is sort of my background, if one says something entirely inaccurate, so I could say, um, you know, uh, Mike Fluitt ate my hamster, I would be legally required to put out a, a retraction afterwards saying, ah, no, sorry, no, he, he, he didn't eat my hamster, it was the dog. That was a joke. Um, and this really is kind of my video equivalent. I considered taking the original video down, but I've elected to leave it up because I still feel that there is a lot in there which is valid and I think it should stand because it's then going to be a sort of a counterpiece to this video, kind of explaining my, my perspective on it. I think the video perhaps failed in some ways because when I do videos like this, in including this one, I don't really have a script. I have a, a rough idea some things that I want to sort of set out and talk about and they don't always kind of come out in the way that I'd hoped in the fashion that I'd hoped and they can be very easily misinterpreted once again this is a failing on my part and I have to take into account the context for somebody watching a video knowing me my relationship with McLaren then taking into account the thumbnail and title, which I have now changed. I changed it to something relatively neutral. And I noticed that once I did that, there were far fewer people having sort of more extreme reactions to the video. So this is something I've learned for future topics that, that maybe I need to, to really put some effort into thinking about what the, the title and thumbnail is. Now, it's not to say that I'm going to make every single thumbnail and title lovely and happy and sunny and rosy because that's just not going to be every single video. But all I can really do and all I want to set out in this video to do is to say that I know I did things wrong. I know that I made mistakes in the presentation, in the facts that I provided, which were untrue. And I apologize that there is no more efficient way of me with correcting that misinformation than making another video. Uh, I have been doing this now for five years. I have spoken with many other YouTubers and I think it's fair to say that none of us have managed to get this far without putting out at least one or two videos that in hindsight we probably regret that we did a little bit wrong. And I'm not going to go so far as to say that I regret putting out the Arturo video, but I do wish that I'd done things a little bit differently. Now, just in case you're wondering, no, McLaren didn't send me any sort of threatening or angry email. In fact, I've never really heard directly from McLaren ever. Uh, that's a great shame. I would love to go down to Woking and have a chat with their powertrain guys and have it explained to me in more detail by people that really do understand this, how the whole thing actually works, how it all goes together, because I think that'd be fascinating and very good content. I somehow don't think that's probably very likely to happen. I live in hope, and if that did happen, I would be certain to, to give the people there the best and, and fairest showing and, and be as honest as I could, as I will if I get the opportunity to drive an Artura, which I hope will one day happen. And that I'm going to try and make is the next time that I will actually discuss 
a McLaren product because I know that everybody's getting bored of me saying these things about McLaren. I was hoping this video was going to be a sort of change of perspective with me looking at you know the statement they've made with this car looking at all the many good things that they've done and, and if you have watched the video and you thought it was was negative i really would ask you to to maybe re-watch and listen to a lot of what i had to say there was a reason i deliberately opened with a lot of very good things and i think perhaps from a narrative perspective that was maybe a mistake because the way this information is presented to you the the order in which it comes is important Unfortunately, I think I opened with lots and lots of really good stuff and then maybe put the negative stuff in the middle and didn't maybe finish on, on a high enough note for people to kind of end the video with an overall positive impression. So again, a failing on my part. I don't tend to really see videos of this nature from other YouTubers. I try not to conduct myself like other YouTubers. I will continue to thank all of you in the comments who posted things both positive and negative. And I hope that those of you who had issues with the video will um, see that I, I really do listen to the feedback. I think ignoring negative feedback in your videos is a very, very silly thing to do because we as YouTubers have as much to learn from the mistakes that we make as the things that we get right. I, this is my job. I am human. I balls up sometimes. Balls up with that video. Sorry to everyone that watched who felt that it, it wasn't what they would kind of have liked it to have been i'm sorry that i didn't get things right because i do pride myself on getting my facts right it does happen that i get them wrong it, it happened in that video uh, for future videos i will make sure to kind of present them as, as correctly as i can um it is my obligation to do so and i would please ask everybody that that commented in the video that that pointed out the things i got wrong to to continue doing so um, to continue holding me to account because this is how I improve. This is how I get better. This is how I, I work. Um, it's, it's a thing. Uh, it happened. Uh, I made mistakes. I understood what I was trying to achieve. I also very much understood that I didn't achieve that. And I understand that that was my fault. I have listened to everyone. I've taken stuff on board. And hopefully the next time this lovely company from Woking uh, comes up in one of my videos, I'll try and get things right because all I actually ever want to do is be fair to them. They have in the past deserved the things I've said about them, but they also deserve plenty of positive press as well. And I do like to try and keep things balanced. So thank you all for holding me to account on that. And I thank you for your continued viewing. Anyway, uh, this evening, if this video goes out on Sunday the 21st, which I hope it will, I will be holding a live stream, and I would love to see some of you for that. If you've missed it, please catch up on it, and uh, thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.